Thought I'd post a little short video today, give you a little update of what it's like living with Starlink. Well, I've had Starlink connected to my kilowatt meter now for 191 hours, which is just about eight days. And I've used a total of 19.97 kilowatt hours. It's currently drawing uh, 110, 111 watts. I'll repeat this test in the summer when the temperatures are warmer. I'm really curious to see whether or not the energy consumption will go down or whether the snow melting feature is just something that's as a result of the electronics in the dish, or whether they're actually doing something that's consuming energy to help melt the snow. Well, this is the temperature in my garage and we're just checking to see how accurate this infrared thermometer is. Let's go outside and measure the temperature of the dish. Uh, it's probably a little warmer than 18 degrees out here. And just as a comparison, here's the temperature of some bare asphalt that's in the sunshine. I've been very pleased with Starlink's performance in this beta test. Pleased enough that I think I'm going to try a bold experiment. I've been wanting to drop my Dish Network TV service for a number of years. The prices just keep going up and up and up. And I've been wanting to get a streaming TV service, but with my DSL service that just wasn't practical. And I think I'm going to have enough bandwidth now that we can go ahead and drop the Dish Network and we can try a streaming service. Well that'll be a real interesting test and I'll report how that goes. I've also had several other questions. One of them was how much did the equipment cost? It cost me about $550 US shipped to my house. Another one is, is what does the service cost? I haven't been billed for any service yet, but it's going to be $100 per month, and currently there's no data cap. I don't know what their plans are for the future, but that's what it is right now. I've been pleased enough with the service now that I, my intention is to drop DSL this week, and we're just going to go boldly forward with Starlink, warts and all. And Starlink has a really nice app which shows you the statistics on your Starlink connection. I think the worst I've seen so far in the eight days I've had it is about 20 minutes of downtime over the course of 12 hours. And some days it's been much less than that. And we've had a heck of a series of storms over the past week, as much as 24 inches of snow. And Starlink dish has melted all that snow off and it's, uh, it's been really good for me. A really big improvement over what I currently have. And some really good news this week, Elon Musk uh, posted on Twitter that he expects that the speeds will double by the end of this year, somewhere around 300 megabits per second. And he also says the latency will drop to somewhere around 20 milliseconds. If they can hit those goals, they're really going to give landline internet really a run for their money. Right now, I still have my dish temporarily set up on the tripod. Uh, I've ordered the volcano mount and it's been pending, and, but I've been a little bit concerned about mounting the uh, volcano mount on my roof. We get so much snow here. I think you need to get it higher off the roof than, than what the volcano mount will allow. And I sent a support request to uh, Starlink. I asked if they would just produce like maybe a 12 or a 16 inch extension that would go between the volcano mount and the mass that comes with the dish right now. I think that would raise it up and keep it above most of the snow. But I didn't get a definitive answer whether anything like that's going to happen. Hopefully over time somebody will come up with an aftermarket solution to make that quite easy for people just to raise their antenna up a little bit further off the roof. But I don't think I'm going to wait. The volcano mounts are currently on back order. I'd like to uh, get this dish up off my driveway so it makes it easier to blow the snow. What I plan to do is buy a, a standard mount for like a satellite dish and uh, that'll raise it up above the roof and I'll see if I can figure out how to mount this Starlink antenna on top of that or on it. And uh, I don't really know how that's going to work, and I'll try and document that on this YouTube channel. I just wanted to show you what my roof looks like, and this is a pretty typical snow accumulation in the middle of winter. So I want to be able to mount the Starlink up above the snow accumulation so that it's clear. And from what I've seen, I'm not going to have to clear any snow off the dish itself. 
I just don't want the snow level to build up so much that it interferes with its auto tracking mechanism. Well, thanks for tuning in. I hope you found this video somewhat useful. If you have, be sure to give me a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.